Welcome to AP Podcast 15.3. This is on buffer capacity. And all I can say is we're going to just continue on this buffering journey. This stuff seems a little uh, intuitive to me. And hopefully it will to you. But there's some really good concepts that are important. And we've got to make sure that we can get it. Um, But we'll work a few problems. And uh, hopefully just build our buffer repertoire so that uh, we have a really good handle on it. So let's look at this. Um, We're going to calculate the change in pH that occurs when you have 0.01 moles of HCl and we add it to uh, each of the following. Alright, now this is one of those problems where we add an acid to a buffer and we've done one before so as you guys well know we've got to do the stoichiometry first. So what I'm going to do is write out the reaction. I'm just going to go H plus Plus, now this AC, of course, is our shorthand way way of writing acetic acid, but I'll go ahead and write it out, at least the acetate ion, so we don't get confused here, okay, and uh, and that, of course, would make acetic acid C2, okay, so here we have our situation where we've got, uh, we're going to add some acid, and how much acid, if you look up there, we're going to add 0.01 mole, um, And notice, here's what's nice, look at this, it's in a one liter container, right? So we don't have to worry about anything. It's it's 0.01 molar. Okay, and then I have two amounts. I have 5 molar and 0.05 molar. So I'm just going to, let's see, I'm going to draw a line here. Hopefully this is not going to confuse anyone. Here's my 5.0 molar and um, my 0.05 molar, right? Um... And then I'm going to draw a line here, and I'm going to go 5.0 molar and my 0.05. You'll see what that line's for in just a second. All right, so now I want to do a little bit of stoichiometry. Now, as I react this 0.01 moles with the 5.0 moles, and without setting up an ice chart, I think we could do this, right? How many moles of, of acetate are going to be left over? Hopefully you can follow along, right? 4.0. Nine, nine, right? It's a one-to-one ratio right here. And so f- you take that and you subtract it by that and you get that. Now what about this smaller concentration, this 0.05 molar? Well, that's going to make a bigger deal, isn't it? Look at this. So I only have four, right? Okay, same situation over here. If I make some acetic acid, I'm going to have this volume, I'm going to have this molarity right here. And this is going to be 0.060. So what we're doing here is we're, sh- we're showing what would happen if I add a relatively weak amount of, uh, a weak concentration of uh, HCl to two different buffer situations, one that's 5 molar and 0.05 molar. And I think you can see that this one is going to handle uh, that acid a lot better than the other one. And that's what I mean when I say, you know, buffer capacity is just kind of intuitive. It's stuff that makes sense. Um, so when, when I use the Henderson Hasselbalch, and I hope I'm not going to upset too many people by not doing it, but when I use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, I get a pH, uh, with this one that started at 4.74, and when you're all done, it's still 4.74. Now you're going, how can that change? Well, the ratio of 4.99 to 5.0, when you, when you go ahead and take, uh, you know, divide one, uh, the acid into the base and take the log of that, you, you get essentially a, a number that's not going to change this, okay? But in this one, however, ah, maybe I ought to just be a good teacher and just do this. 4.74 plus the log of uh, 0.04 divided by 0.06. And that ends up equaling uh, a negative 0.18. And so when I add that to uh, the 4.74, I get a, a pH of 4.56. Okay. By the way, this amount right here, when when I added the uh, the 4.99, or when I divided those two, I got a value of like something like 0.0017, which you can see is why this doesn't change, right? But this one does change. Now, granted, it's not a gigantic change, which is okay, but uh, it is a change nonetheless. 
um, and that's because you know we have a buffer but when you look at the capacity of these two solutions uh, I think it makes sense that this one with the 5 molar is going to be able to handle a change in pH or handle any addition of acid or base a lot better than the one that uh, ha is a smaller concentration. Again, it just kind of is an intuitive thing, but it's important that we think about that. Okay, so buffer capacity. Well, what's going on? Well, first of all, the best buff best. <laughs> Let me slow that down. The best buffers have a ratio of the anion to the acid of 1. And, you know, the situation is like if I have 0 0.50 over 0 0.50, right, that equals 1. So when we have these concentrations the same, that's the best buffer we can have. That's the most resistant to change. And that, of course, uh, again, Captain Obvious, thank you, Mr. Richardson, uh, when those two concentrations are the same. Okay, and so uh, it's important that we look for that when we're trying to examine a buffer situation, and then we want to also think about the concentration. Now, you might see a question once in a while where it says, "Make a buffer with a uh, that'll handle a pH of X." And I'm only we're only going through this because every once in a while this kind of this question pops up, and I want to make sure that you guys get this stuff. So the way we choose a, pu a buffer, and if we think about the Henderson uh, Hasselbalch equation, you know, the pH equals the pKa plus the log of A over HA. All right, and we're going to make a buffer where that little quantity right there equals one right so if this is one okay what's the log of one well you guys know the log of one is zero right so if we want to do that we want our uh, buffer uh, to have a pH close to the uh, a pK close to the pH that we're looking for and we'll get more into um, that kind of stuff when we start doing our titration. So let me show you what kind of question you might see with this. Okay, so here's a chemist. The chemist needs to make a buffered solution of 4.30 and they can choose from the following acids and their salts, right? Now I just mentioned that you want to use uh, a salt that has a pKa close to the pH. So this problem is is not very difficult. Your book goes through a bunch of stuff and calculates using the equilibrium expression. And I just find it silly. All right, because basically, what do you have to do with these Ka's? Okay, as you guys know, you just have to take the negative log of these guys, right? And you can find the pKa. So I've got these numbers jotted down. Let me write them. When I do that, I get a pKa of 2.87, 4.89, 4.19, and 7.46, all right? So again, if I wanted uh, a buffer with a certain pH, Okay, and why that's going to be important is, again, will be more obvious to us when we start doing our titration equations. I'm going to look for the pKa that's closest to the pH I'm looking for. And so in that situation, I would choose this one. Hopefully you would agree with me there, right? Uh, 4.1. That's pretty darn close to 4.30. All right. I, the only reason we're doing this is because, again, it's one of those questions you see every once in a while, and sometimes it throws students for a loop, and, and uh, I don't want that to happen to you guys. Okay, so there's buffer capacity. Again, the important stuff is that you really pay attention to this the concentration, right? And you really pay attention to the fact that this ratio uh, equaling one is very important. If you got that, you're in great shape. I'll see you guys in class, and we'll talk about any questions that you may have. See you next time.